Should you study another martial art? By that I mean a martial art other than the one you started with, the one you think of as your own. I think you should. When everyone is thinking alike, no one is thinking very much. Maybe there's more than one right answer to a question. Maybe there's more than one good solution to a problem. We all get trapped in patterns, habitual ways of thinking, beliefs, assumptions. It's always a good idea to look at things from a different perspective, from another angle. It's good to ask yourself, what if everything I believe is wrong? What if the exact opposite is true? Studying a different martial art will help you think outside your box because it will make you aware of your box. Self-defense seems to be a universal human problem. Different kinds of people have come up with different kinds of solutions for that problem. When you study different martial arts, you gain some insights into different cultures, different beliefs, different ways of thinking. You'll make connections. No matter how different two martial arts may seem, they all share certain elements. I think studying other martial arts is a way to remind yourself of our common humanity. As Thomas Wolfe wrote, you can never go home again. Stepping outside yourself, stepping outside what you know, what you're comfortable with, that changes you. It changes your perspective on your own art, your own beliefs, your own culture. I think that kind of growth is a good thing, even though growth usually involves pain. It isn't enough to answer questions. You have to question the answers. A wise man once said, never try to ride two horses at the same time. They also say, it takes a lot of horses to make a good horseman. So, timing is everything. It's probably not the best idea to try to learn too many similar but different things at the same time, like Castilian Spanish and New World Spanish. They're quite alike, so it seems easy but they're different enough that you can make some embarrassing and entertaining errors. On the other hand, learning two very different things at the same time is a lot easier, say Spanish and math. They're different enough that you probably won't inadvertently conflate one with the other. But if you're going to compare apples and oranges, it helps if you know what an orange is. If you don't know the what and the how and the why, of your own martial art, you may not be ready to explore the what and the how and the why of a different martial art. When you look at another martial art, whether you're going someplace in person or, or looking online, there are some things you should do and some questions you should ask. Is it for dueling? That's a voluntary, mutually engaged combat between two people. Is it for a brawl, a street fight that is involuntary combat? Is it for battle, a combat involving large organized bodies of people? And what is it an example of? Is it a sport, a limited combat in which participants compete for a prize? Is it a martial art? skills of the duel, brawl, or battle, practiced for self-development, or theoretical knowledge rather than practical application. Some martial arts have split into two forms, a martial art form and a sport form, and the two can be quite different, as in fencing and fencing. Even though they have the same name, they may mean very, very different things, and you have to know which one you're watching. Is what you're seeing a good example of the art? Are you watching a beginner, an amateur, or a master? See, a, a master makes very, very difficult things look easy. A beginner 
makes very, very easy things look difficult. It helps to know which one you're watching. But you can only see what's on the outside. You can't tell what's going on on the inside. So the only way to know how difficult something really is, is to try it for yourself. Is this martial art for the average person? Is it for the young, fit, and flexible? Is it for people with limited physical capabilities? Is it for soldiers and other professional killers? Is it for actors and stuntmen? You have to know who it's for. You should be able to tell almost immediately, I mean in the first few moments, whether the people you're watching have any regard for safety or courtesy. For me, that's a deal breaker. I'm not interested in getting injured. I'm not interested in associating with discourteous people. I recommend that you don't either, but that's entirely up to you. I think the most important thing when you study other martial arts is to wear your white belt. In case you don't know what I mean, uh, my teacher, Mr. Simon, and I used to visit other dojos. He was a high-ranking black belt, but he never wore his own rank when we visited another dojo. He, he wore a white belt. And it was because we're coming there to learn from them, not to show what we know. So wear your white belt. Go in with an empty mind, an open mind. Go in the same way you went into your first martial art, not knowing anything, and just accept and do what they ask you to do and do the best you can. Resist the urge to compare the new martial art with your, with your own. That's going to be hard to do. We always have a bias toward what we learned first and everything else that we compare to that and it's either, um, oh, that's right or that's wrong compared to what I learned first. But it isn't right or wrong, it's just different. You have to judge it on its own merits. Forget about what you know. That also means you resist the urge to ask questions. Now, some of those questions may be legitimate, but let's not kid each other. A lot of those questions are to show off how much you know. It's not the time for that. Be patient, and most of the questions you have will be answered as you progress. When you're ready to understand the answer, you probably won't have to ask the question. Here's a couple of other tips for studying a new martial art. Look for similarities first. What actions, ideas, and principles do you see that you have in common? All martial arts are about self-control, balance, line, focus, and distance, situational awareness, early pattern recognition, and fear management. How are those things exemplified in this martial art as compared to your own? Learn and use the language and correct terminology as used by your new martial art. Language both reveals and creates thought. Some words don't translate well from one language to another. Sometimes a word has a different meaning as a term of art than it does in common use. And different groups might use the same word to mean different things. Be sure that you know what the word means in this context and use it properly. Are there religious, philosophical, social, or political values and beliefs that underpin this art?
Look at the whole, not just the parts. Look at the whole system. How does each part relate to every other part? Well, there's a word for what we've been talking about. The word is hoplology. That's not a word you hear every day. When I tell people about what I do, I usually use the term martial arts because that gives them some idea of what I'm talking about. But hoplology is the study of combat. The term hoplology was coined by the British adventurer, Sir Richard Francis Burton in the late 19th century. It comes from the Greek word hoplite, meaning citizen soldier. The term was later revivified by the extraordinary martial artist and author, Don F. Drager. Like Omnia Gallia, hoplology is divided into three parts. Technological hoplology is the design, construction, and use of weapons and armor. Functional hoplology is about the development, organization, and structure of combat systems. Behavioral hoplology is about the psychological, physiological, and spiritual aspects of combat. We call our practice Applied Behavioral Hoplology because we teach those behavioral aspects of combat that are useful in everyday life. But whether you call it hoplology, or martial arts, or cream cheese, I think you'll find that there are more things in heaven and earth than dreamt of in your philosophy. I recommend that you explore a few of them.